speak. I will go first and then I'll introduce you. Okay. <laughs> Hi guys, Debbie Lively here again with Lively View. Thank you guys so much for coming to uh, view another one of my videos. I so appreciate you all always say. Uh, the ancestors, I know I always come in and invite the ancestors in, but they're here with us. Um, but today I have an incredible uh, guest here who uh, who's, you know, doing business in Africa, moving incredible products. And she's going to, I'm going to let her introduce herself and she's going to tell you a little bit about her business and what she's doing and what it means to do business in Africa and what that's like, you know, what that experience is like in the event that uh, you guys are interested in doing business. You guys may know, I, I don't really talk about my purses a lot because I've been kind of working on transitioning and creating another website. But business and doing business in Africa is something that I'm doing, is something that I'm promoting, which is one of the reasons why I have um, the guests that I have with us today. So go ahead and, and introduce yourself and let's talk about what it is that you do. All right. Um, first of all, thank you for having me. It's mm -hmm. a pleasure doing this. Um, my name is Niyota King. Uh, my name is Swahili. My name means star of the morning. So I like to tell people I was born into Africa. Um, <laughs> everything about me, the way I was raised, um, my culture has had an African um, heritage. Um, I am the owner of All About Us. We sell African attire, um, jewelry, and accessories. Um, everything I have is made, is hand selected, and is uh, made in Africa. Okay. Okay. My website, my website is shopallaboutus.com. All right. All right. Well, Naomi, why don't you tell us about some of your products? You can even show them to us if you want. Know, like, what are some of your premier products that you're you're promoting and you know, and moving. Sure, absolutely. Um, well, I have a lot of book bags. Um, these are handmade. Uh, we have the Endinka symbols here. This is the Sankofa bird. Um, all my products, I like to have a message with it. So mm. I like to describe the product. Uh, the meaning of the Sankofa bird is to return and get what was lost to you. So oh. to know that there's a purpose behind these symbols and not just symbols. Um, so this is, uh, you know, it has a couple of compartments here. Of course, um, I have handbags. I have these handbags that are great. Um, Dream and leather, 100% hand, um, handcrafted. Um, they're very durable. They're nice and lined on the inside. So you're getting a great product. Um, I would like to say what led me to this business was a handbag. You know, most women, we love handbags and purses. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father, he traveled to uh, Africa, West Africa, Ghana, and he brought me back a purse. And I was just like, oh, my God, I love it. And mm -hmm. next thing I know, I've started a business selling this. Go ahead with your question. Yeah, you know, I know we're having a pause, so hopefully that'll work itself out. But you know okay. what, what? What country in Africa are your bags made? I mean, are is, are your products made? At? Um, majority come from uh, Ghana. Okay, Ghana. But then I do have products that were made in Senegal and the Gambia. Okay. I've been I've been to Senegal and the Gambia in 2018 and 2019. I went two years okay. in a row. Um, I established contacts there. And then um, I have not been to Ghana as of yet. I'm planning to go. I was supposed to go this year, but COVID, we ain't gonna talk about it. I'm but going, anyway. I'm going in December. I'll be here in December. <laughs> okay, awesome. That's awesome. And um, so I do have a reliable contact in Ghana. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that because that's a challenge, getting okay. that, that stable resource. Okay, so most of your products are made in, I'm understanding you, in Senegal and in the Gambia. Is that where they're made? You kidding? I, the majority are made in Ghana. Oh, okay, but Ghana. I do have pieces from Senegal and the Gambia. Okay. Yes. okay, okay, awesome. Okay, so why don't you tell us like what uh, what's a pro and what would be a con in terms of like doing business in in Africa? 
doing business with different vendors? What would be something that's positive and something that's negative that you would could share? Um, a pro would be you get you getting um authentic merchandise, handcrafted merchandise that is exclusive and is very authentic. So it's you won't see another person walking around with the same bag you have. So if you're that type of person that likes that um that originality mm -hmm. and to be exclusive, that is a pro right. uh, for African products. Also, it stimulates the economy. That is one um, part of my purpose from only buying directly from uh, Africa. There mm -hmm. are other uh, suppliers, but they're not genuinely African. Mm -hmm. And that's the mission and my purpose of this business is to stimulate the economic economy because you're helping you know, people that are less fortunate than you. They're getting an equal uh, playing field where you buying their merchandise. You know, they can sustain on their own. Right. Um, a con for uh, being over there, I mean, buying merchandise from there would be uh, the shipping. That's number one. The shipping yeah. is sometimes very costly. Yeah. It's costly and it takes a while to get uh, I Normally it takes two weeks for my order to come in. Yeah. But um, yeah. I was fortunate enough to go over and meet my suppliers. The only one I haven't met um, was the one in Ghana. Okay. However, um, I have a family member that knows them for over 10 years, and so we trust them. Okay. But that would be a con pretty much in any business is not getting a reliable or honest uh, supplier right. or manufacturer. So the ones I've been fortunate enough to meet them and actually go on the ground and, and, and hand select different items, so um, I've been fortunate enough to that, but that would be the biggest downfall is like sending your money, you know, yeah. virtually and not getting the product back. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, that was my experience. Too. Not I actually met my vendor here in the States. I met him at a festival and we kind of collaborated and, you know, he was already making a bag similar to mine and I gave him some different <laughs> colors. But I would definitely agree. And I actually did a video on that talking about the shipping. I had to wait so long because my last shipping came through at the height of Corona here in the U.S. And I mean, it took months. And then I, you know, and I had another issue, too. I was sending my logo to him. He literally I sent my logo to him in February. He did not get it until the end of July. It was just. Oh, wow. Really? It was bad. It was so bad. Yes, yes. So bad. So I would definitely say I would agree with you 100% in terms of the shipping. That is that is a, a missing component. If there's some way with, you know, the Ghana Business uh, Council, not Ghana, but just some African business, business Council, depending upon what country you're dealing with, if they could bridge that gap and helping people here in the diaspora to, um, you know, have better shipping in some way. Oh my God, we could just do great things here. We could we could move so many products from Africa here, you know, for people yeah. who have a bit yeah. more affordable income, right? Yes. Yeah, I would definitely agree with you 100 percent So uh yeah. what would you do if you were to give somebody advice who wanted to do like retail or anything, you know, any business, if they wanted to be say here, that again. What would, advice would you give someone like a diasporan, like some, someone like you or myself who wanted to like stay here in the U.S. and like source products from Africa? What advice would you give them? I would say um, go, go to Africa, go mm -hmm. to that country and actually put your feet on the ground, get to know those people, get to, you know, I would say bring some um product back with you. That's the biggest thing. That's why I want to go so bad. Um, I'm planning to go in the next uh, three months. I'm going to be going. Okay. But um, actually go know who your contact is. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's one thing to meet someone here in the States and then they go back and they say they're going to do X, Y, and Z. And right. those things will come twofold. Mm -hmm. Also, um, you know, have a good contact with them. Have a good contact. Do that rapport. 
just take them out to dinner, you know, see what kind of person that they are wholeheartedly. Right. Also, I would, my um second recommendation would be when you make your first shipment, don't make it a huge one. Mm. Because if that one doesn't fall through, you're not at that much of a loss. Right. You know what I'm saying? Order a few things, fill your way out, and as time goes on, you can increase your orders. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I really wish, I'm not sure, you know, I know you're in a different state than I'm in, because like, like, you know, I really want to find some, some really nice African clothes. Like, I actually, because I'm going to be there in December, I actually have set, set aside a little bit of money to buy me some clothes when I'm there. Because like this dashiki that I have on was made in India. You know what I mean? I bought it here at an African store, but it was made in India. Right. And, and that's that's my purpose. That's my purpose. And that's my drive behind my company is to bring the authentic merchandise here because we need to cut out the middleman. Yeah. We need to have a black economics for ourselves to revolve around me and you, you know, the people of the diaspora and right. the people of yeah. Africa, like a one on one contact. Right. So. Right. I was a fortunate. I was fortunate enough to make that good contact, and I do have uh, skirts and different items um, on my website. You know, that are authentically made, and that's a passion of mine because there are some, uh, you know, big name websites that carry African merchandise or African looking merchandise, and like you said, it's made in India or China. Right. <laughs> And I feel like that's why we we're in the position that we're in in the diaspora because we're always outsourcing, you know, what we want, what we need, but we really need to have those things in house. I agree, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. That's my my desire too. And when I think when I went to the festival, when I met the guy who was doing my purses, and I saw the integrity and how how his his workmanship, his craftsmanship was so good. And I'm like, you know, and at the time I was buying like coach purses and, you know, Kate Spade purses. And I'm like, this is crazy. You know, that he's making that purse as well as he is and selling it for a fraction of these designers. Oh, what it, yes, yes, yes. You know what I mean? So, um, so that was one of the things I said, you know, I know I like good stuff and I'm sure you do too. I don't yes, like good stuff. It may not have the name brand on it, you know, or the designer brand, but the integrity and the, and the uh, quality of it. You can't buy that in a Macy's, you know. You can't no. buy that, you know, at a Newman Market. You can't buy that. And then you think about these people are making these like by hand. These are handcrafted. There, there's a skill into making these things. It's not just oh, I'm gonna run it through the sewing machine and it's done. The, they take the time and the skill to make these, and it's very creative the way they make a lot of their merchandise. Right. right. You know, um, I feel the same way about you. I have the same sentiment. I was buying all these name brand purses, just like you said. And when I got this purse, I got this purse in 2007. I mean, not 2007, 2017, excuse me. And it's still good quality. The zipper works. Everything works on it. I still use it to this day. Right. And I, like I said, I can't beat it. I put I put the other person down, the coach bag. I put that in the back of the closet. I know. Me too. I don't yeah. care. Anything, I don't care anything but African the African bags that I sell. Those are the only. And I absolutely love them. I mean, when I'm going, when I'm walking down the street, people are always asking me like. You know where you get that bag. You know people are always inquiring about it, or either they're yeah, just yeah. looking at it. You know what I mean? Because it's different. It's different. So, um, but it is my hope that more, you know, diasporans. That's why I'm, you know, I invited you to come. That more diasporans would, you know, do something like what you're doing. I mean, we're making products. I'm not sure. Do you have any products for men, or yours mostly? Are you have unisex products, or yours? I have unisex products and I do have products for men. I have uh, shirts, African um, shirts, a couple of uh, two-piece outfits for men. I'm trying to get uh, more men's products. But
Uh-oh, you went out a but little bit. But that's a sentiment that my supplier said. I mean, we buy more than men, but we can't leave the brothers out, you know. Exactly. So I do have a few unisex products. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, they buy pork too, right? You know, men buy stuff too. I mean, they don't buy as much yes. as we do, but they do buy things. And I've been thinking about that too, like coming up or, you know. But see, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm just going to stick to my bags. And for those of you guys who were inquired about my bags, I'm working on my new website. That's why I've been promoting them on, like I said, on, on my channel, but I will be real soon. Um, but you know, men, I'm, I'm waiting until I go to Africa and I'm just gonna look, just like you said, I'm going to kind of look around and see what's there that, you know, I think may be of value to, you know, people here in America, African-Americans here in, in America. So, but I'm really excited about it. Really excited about it. Is uh, how yeah. is it going? How has business been going for you? Um, well, I would say this year it's been it's been um steady. I would say it hasn't grown because I feel like the corona has really yeah. put a damper on a lot of things. However, before the corona, it, my business was growing very fast. Um, I do a lot of outdoor markets and vending events. Mm -hmm. So that's where I get to, you know, talk to people, meet them and make that contact. But um, since the corona, I've been mainly online trying to build my online um, base. Just like you said, I had to revamp my website. And um, I that's when I revamped my website. I did a whole rebranding. I got new merchandise. This merchandise is well crafted. You know, um, it costs a little bit more, but it's well worth it. I, I don't want to put my name on something that's not, you know, well made or, you know, it's like it's a bad product. So exactly. I've been very careful on selective on me um you know bringing in new product getting new products yeah i'm just trying to get the sun out of my face <laughs> i can see like this glare yeah now, here's the thing i noticed when i do i don't really like doing vending events but i noticed that when i do vending events that's where i make money too so you're yeah you know you're definitely dead on i really would like for us to get to a point you know as, as african americans where we can trust buy online because that is really just the way of the future right especially with corona a lot of us we can't get out to festivals a lot of the festivals are even canceled right yeah yeah but i find that when people when i go to an event and i set up all my bags you know when i've done that people love them like they're touching them and they like oh, this is real leather i'm like yeah this is all just like you say this is handcrafted made by hand and people love it and i make sales but I, it seems like people are a little reluctant to do it online. And that's why I'm redoing, revamping my website. Um, you know, just trying to make it a little bit more uh, you know, user friendly, just to promote, get people more encouraged to, to make, you know, to hit that, that, you know, put it in their cart button and purchase it, right? Because people are loving it, you know, when they see it. But they seem to be a little bit more reluctant, you know, online. And, you know, I really... I'm going to be working on that over the next couple of months, trying to get over that hurdle because that's that's really what I want to purchase. I mean, I that's what I really want to do is sell my bags online because at some point I intend to live in Africa, right? And I intend to me too, me too. I'm going <laughs> yeah. out of here, <laughs> and I intend to do all of my business online, right? Have my have my YouTube channel and doing my business selling products online. And then I will be there, right? So that I can see what's happening and, you know, be able to put, you know, take an African product and put like an American spin on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We like, well, African, we like, we like African things, but we may not like, we, we may not want Americans, we may not want to be dressed African from head to toe. Head to toe, yeah. You know what I mean? But we want that kind of African flair, that kind of African touch to some of our clothes, right? Yeah, it's a, sure. Of course, of course, yeah. Connect her, you know, to my ancestors. Yeah, of course. Um, I find like at the like you said at the vending events because it's it's um it's visual. They see it and they yeah. can touch it, and people that's how people interact by seeing and touching things. So and the colors, the colors of these bags, 
they draw you in the colors of all african merchandise draw you in you're like oh that's so pretty you know i think people get kind of like hypnotized by the colors like oh but um online i find um i have made some sales since i have this new website more than the last website so that's a positive but i feel it's shopallaboutus.com Okay, shop all about us dot com. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm also on Instagram at shop underscore all about us, and Facebook is all about us. Can I, um, can I, can I just ask you? Um, okay, go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish giving doing your plug. I was I was gonna say the thing that helps me out the most is building that social media page that um social media base that drives the traffic to your website so everything i do i put shop all about us underneath so mm-hmm. they go to the website they're drawn to that website you know okay when you say social media you mean like your instagram your facebook yeah all of those, all of those yeah all of those social media sites do you have a youtube channel do you have a YouTube i do channel? have a youtube channel it's all about us the african plug okay so i do have a youtube channel um i i have been um working on that to try to build that base as well okay because, right. um, that that will give you a lot of traffic that'll yeah. give you a lot of traffic yep 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 what about i'm gonna ask you one other one or two other questions so if somebody wants to do like a kind of a e-commerce business what what advice would you give them if somebody wanted to do like an african e-commerce business much like what you're doing this sun is like doing all kinds of crazy i know it's moving (laughs) the sun is moving um so my thing my my journey the best thing the best the best advice i would give is to record your journey so Mm -hmm. on my youtube channel i have a lot of footage um of when i went to africa awesome i have a lot of uh, african footage so that would be my recommendation to you when you go uh take a lot of pictures a lot of videos because like i said people are visual people they're visual creatures you know what i'm saying they want to see everything right um also here i live in florida i live in west palm beach um we do a lot of outdoor markets. So I try to connect with like-minded people who are Afrocentric of the diaspora. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do different events. We have a drum circle here. Mm. Um, I ha- I host events here at my house. Okay. We, painted the, we painted the fence red, black, and green. Okay. So it's the red, black, and green house. That's how we identify it. Um, so just make like your whole, basing your whole, life about your business that's what's been helping me like mm-hmm. culturally make it ingrained into you every day you know um when i have my outdoor markets here it's we have a, a little piece of land and i like to want to use it as like an incubator for other uh, black entrepreneurs mm-hmm. so we have events here i do uh events with the drum circle not so much now because of COVID, but mm-hmm. um before that's how i was building my base okay that's so really like advice. your life that's really good advice yeah like, integrate it in your life side, like make it your you know who yeah you know. because that's that's what people are going to see they're not going to see like oh uh me myself i do have a full-time job i work in manufacturing so okay. They say, oh, you work in manufacturing. That's if I wouldn't do that, if I wouldn't integrate my business into my life, that's all people would know, you uh-huh. know, that I work. Right. But when right. you integrate it every day, you know, try to make it part of your day, then that's all people see. And that's what you're known for. That's what you're going to be known uh-huh. for. Yeah. Do you ever, yeah. you know, sometimes people look at you weird because I talk about Africa all the time. Do people, you get that? Like, yeah. Like, yeah. I I was um the first time I went to Africa, I was part of a group tour. And I was so inspired by my trip. My mission also is to take people to Africa, like younger people like myself. 
because when I was on the tour, I noticed that most people were older, retired senior citizens. They had that disposable income. That's why they were able to go. But if we're putting Africa, if we're putting Africa in the forefront every day, boom, it's Africa every day. People, more people are going to want to go and they want to go to see what are these people talking about? Why do they keep talking about Africa? Right. You know, they're going to be intrigued by it. Right. So, um, when I came back, I said every young person under 40 needs to go to Africa at least one time. That's right. my belief yeah. because yeah. it's life changing to see everybody look like you, right? Everybody looks like you. You know, it looked like your auntie, your brother, whatever. I seen people over there. I swear to God, I'm like, hey, you live on such and such street, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because they're our brothers and sisters. Right. But um, the point I'm trying to get to is that I want to expose because I feel like there's a dis there is a disconnect between Africa and the people of the diaspora. Right. And I feel like if we come together more and have that connection, we'll be unstoppable in business. We'll be unstoppable, like socially, you know, raising our children. We wouldn't have probably have as many issues with our children because they live different over there. They live in communities. Here, when you turn 18, 19, you out the house. Right. They, they don't they don't do that. So it's more of a connected upbringing. And I feel they have values and morals that we're lacking and i feel like we have the intelligence and the skill that they're lacking exactly so coming together we unstoppable and we can heal and fix a lot of our issues absolutely so that's my mission why i'm like hey you need to go to africa you need to go to africa you need to go to africa mm -hmm. and my second trip i was the host I took eight women to Africa. So I recruited, I put together the tour package. I recruited all the people to go. Um, and we went mostly, a uh, majority of them were older women. Like I said, but I want to get that, that under 40 audience. That's my goal is that under 40 audience because they have the opportunity to, to make those connections and make a difference for the younger generation you know what i'm saying so um when i was when i was getting um like going around recruiting talking to people about africa i got this africa why i want to go to africa like i got that a lot so i did get received that like africa why are you talking about africa we here in the united states yeah um there are people that aren't interested but when once I tell them and show them, I see them the, their mind that you know start to wonder and like, okay, well maybe you know she has a point. And I feel like they're just uneducated mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. Africa, and it's my job and other people like you and me jobs to educate them and enlighten them so they could be like, oh, you know that's right, you know. So true. And, yeah, and have that sense of pride. Girl, we're like twins. <laughs> that's been that has been my experience for sure. Because you know, I'm oh, I'm over forty, but yes. I tell you, I wish that I had. If I known, if I had known, you know, 10, 15 years ago, what I know today. You know, but you get it. You know, the divine and the ancestors call you when when you're ready. When you're ready, you got to be mature enough. Yes, yeah. you got to be mature. Well, you know, I'm taking my kids with me when we go in December. I'm taking both of my kids with me. I have a seven. That's year great. And a Let expose them. Expose them as early as possible. Like, you know, here in these in the states, I was like I said, my name Niyota Ye Asabuhi is Swahili. And it means star of the morning. So my name is African. My father, uh, all his friends are either like Caribbean or African or some part of diaspora. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. the things that are not traditional here in black culture or African culture, I was exposed to early. So when I went, I was like, okay, 
I could get with this. You know, it, it was it was easy. It was easier transition for me. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good that you had that experience. Oh, now I see what it is. I just moved my phone. That's what was scanning. What was like putting the sun in? My oh, head. the phone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that is awesome that you had that experience earlier, and that's what I want for my children too. And it's so important, you know. And I know we're getting off the topic. We were talking about, you know, your handbags and purses and products. But I'm going to tell you what you said about family is so key because, you know, what I would have always told my children, what I would was my gauge of a successful parent was that if you raise children who are able to be independent, you know, once you're not here, you know, they're able to take care of themselves. So mm -hmm. I've always told my kids, prepare my kids. When you get over a certain age, you got to move out. You know what I mean? But what you were saying earlier is so true about African families. They stay together. And there's so much more value in that. But we've been taught this kind of Western thinking about like sending our kids out there. But there's nothing wrong with them, you know, being able to stay home and, you know, for the family to be able to be together. Because, you know, historically, that's how African families have been. And we've lost sense of that. So yeah, we lost sense of that. And I feel like it becomes twofold because when a, a um, young adult goes out in the world, you know, they find their own and they end up starting their own family. And it's kind of like, not saying they're not close, but it's kind of like a separation there. You yeah. know, like my sister lives over there, but I live over here. We only see each other occasionally. Not that you have an issue with your family member, but you're just not together all the time. Yeah. And I find that when it's the reverse way around, like when the parent gets older, oh, time to go in the nursing home. Yeah. Over there, they don't have nursing home. Yeah. You know, the parent takes care of you when you're a child. Right. And when the parent gets old, the child takes care of them. Right. And that's how it is there. You know, you just give that reciprocity back to that right. person. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Oh, well, we can talk about this all, we can talk about all day long, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. So is there any, you know, parting words that you would give to anybody who's interested in doing business with Africa? Any advice? I know you've already given, you know, so much wise advice, but is there anything else that, you know, we haven't touched upon that you would suggest or recommend for anybody who's interested in doing what both you and I are doing? Um, do your research. Do your research. Number one, do your research. Talk to other people. See what the market is in your area. You know, mm -hmm. like it may not be handbags. Mm -hmm. They may be a different market in your, your area. It may be more um, musical instruments. I know that's popular down here because we have in South Florida, it's it's different from the rest of the United States. It's more Caribbean based and more uh, uh, people from the diaspora, you know? Okay. So they do have these drumming circles. So just find your niche market. That would be one thing. And actually, uh, if you can go to Africa, go and see, put your, put your boots on the ground. That way, you know, the skill, and the quality of what you're purchasing that would be the worst thing to do is spend a lot of money and then you get a poor product right. and you can't get your money back right absolutely there's no getting no money back right <laughs> no. <laughs> no getting no money yeah back. right well you know so what? that would be my best thing okay all right okay so go yeah. to africa and know what you and know what your market is yeah okay Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much. I so appreciate you taking time to come and share, you know, your products and share your wisdom, you know, with my audience. My audience is not very big, but the ones that have come are loyal. So uh, for those of you guys who come and, you know, watch the video, please go. And uh, the holidays are coming up. If you believe in that sort of thing, go and buy products, go and visit her website um and see what she has to offer and let's just try to support each other i know we say that all the time and you you know she has good products so go and look at her products because i'm not saying just out of charity go and buy and look look at her things 
she has some nice products. So go and, you know, spend your money there and you will be supporting, you know, some vendors in Africa. And that really is what it's all about as it relates to people who look like us. Right. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I like always end my, my videos by saying a shay. Okay. Okay. Nayana, we will see. Okay. You. We will see you soon. All right. All right. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Sure. I love talking to anybody who wants to talk about Africa because I'm very <laughs> much like you, all things Africa. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you. Oh, bye.